Recently, I was given a vintage 1950s Craftsman King Sealy wood lathe. It was mounted on a homemade workbench and the external motor was affixed with some angle iron. And in its current setup, I'm sure it works just fine. But you know I can't settle for just fine. A tinkerer's got a tink. We're going to build a new workbench for it and make some improvements along the way. So let's get started. The first thing I've got to do is disassemble everything. I'm going to reuse some of this homemade bracketry that's attached to the motor. It actually functions really well. Now it's time to make the bench. I didn't realize it at the time, but everything I was using was reclaimed or salvaged from another project, including these 2x4s that I'm cutting for the framework. They were given to me by someone who had them left over from their project. After we get all the pieces cut, we're going to pre-drill them and assemble them with screws. This will make the subframe really strong. This piece of MDF is going to provide our top and our sides. It's actually a salvaged piece also. I ordered some nice MDF for a customer at work and it was strapped on top of this piece of MDF. They were using it as a skid to protect the good stuff, but I salvaged it anyway and I'm glad I did. Here we've cut a piece to fit the top of our workbench and I'm securing it with screws. To connect the frame at the bottom, I'm using another 2x4 and securing it with pocket screws. We're doing the same method on the top as well. Now we'll flip it over and screw everything down. We're going to put some cross bracing underneath the top. This will help strengthen the top and stiffen the frame. It will also give us a place to screw our lathe into. I've decided to mount the motor underneath the bench, so I'll have to pass the belt down through a hole underneath the lathe. Here I've framed out the opening for that, and now I'm marking the corners with the drill bit. Now I flip the bench back over and I'm connecting the dots using my square. And with my jigsaw, I'm going to cut this opening out. perfect alignment with the blocks we put in. A few seconds into filming this segment, my camera inexplicably turned to slow motion. The resulting recording, to me, sounds like the noises emanating from the forest during the construction of the Trojan Rabbit in the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail. You be the judge.
smooth as butter. I'm going to extend the back of the bench up. This way we can hang some tools from it later. I'm using some 2x4s that were salvaged from a play set. That's why they're this color. And I'm attaching them to the bench with pocket screws. For the back of the bench, I'm using this Luan plywood. This is also a salvaged piece from a shipment I ordered for the same customer. It's a really unique size for a piece of plywood. It's five foot by five foot. So it works perfect for this situation. Otherwise we'd have a seam. We want it to go almost all the way to the floor but not actually drag. So to space it up a little bit, we're putting a scrap piece underneath it to hold it off the floor a quarter inch. And then we're gonna screw it onto the back. Now back to the MDF and we're cutting a bottom for our cabinet. Here I'm screwing it down to the base. And now with more MDF from the same sheet, we're gonna cut our sides. We're gonna screw it on with screws and leave it a quarter inch off of the ground as well. And we'll do the same on the front skirt. We do this to keep chunks of wood out from underneath our casters. More MDF makes up the face frames of our bench. And one more piece along the top. Here I'm ripping a 45 degree angle on a piece of plywood. And here I'm cutting that same plywood up into components to make a box for our switch. With a little glue and a few brads, we'll attach these components together. Now to cut the sides for the box, we're using a piece of Luan plywood and we're tracing and using a straight edge to get our lines to cut. Now we're gonna glue and brad those onto the box as well. Here's the completed switch box. It'll mount right here. But first we've got to cut a hole in it for this electrical box. I'm tracing it and using a straight edge to mark where it needs to be cut. And then using the oscillating tool, I'm cutting out the opening. The box is so deep it hits when it goes in. So we chisel out a recess underneath so that the box can slide all the way in. These blocks will provide a place to screw the new box into. First I'm gluing, then I'm bradding them, and then I'm screwing them onto the bench. Now to make some holes in the side of the box so that we can put some screws in it. These screws go through the holes into the blocks that we mounted and hold the switch box on the bench. Before we mount the lathe on the new bench, I'm cleaning some of the rust off of the bed. I'm just using WD-40 and some steel wool. Seems to work really well. Two out of the three screws holding this plate on the tailstock were missing, so I'm replacing them all three with new screws with some blue Loctite on them. The lag screws that hold the lathe to the bench are driven in most of the way with my drill. Then I finish them up with the ratchet making sure not to tighten them too much and crack the cast iron. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we've got for this video. We got a good start, though. The bench is made and the lathe is mounted. Next time, 
we'll mount the motor. We'll engineer some adjustability for different speeds. We'll mount our tool holders and we'll finish up the project. So stay tuned for next time. And as always, thanks for watching.